Hello, welcome again. My name is Dave Hicks. Today we're going to do some chemistry. I'm continuing my acids and bases series with writing and naming acids. Here's what you can expect. We should be able to name binary acids. We should be able to name both types of the ternary acids. We'll see what the difference is between these two binaries and ternary acids. And then finally, we'll be able to write these chemical formulas for all of the acids. So, let's first talk about naming acids here. I'm going to start out with binary acids. Um, binary acids contain only two elements most of the time. Um, sometimes it may contain three. There are some odd exceptions. But one thing that I've not seen an exception to is that binary acids, or these particular ones that we're going to use this system for, don't have any oxygen in them. No oxygen. When it doesn't have any oxygen in it, then we use the word hydro in the front, and then we use the name of the anion, as we're going to see here in a minute, and we change the ending to an ick and then we attack on acid. So for instance, let me grab this one here, HF. See, only two elements in this and no oxygen. So HF is our binary acid. We're going to use this particular system. And I'm going to start out its name with hydro. And then this is fluorine, so I'm going to say fluor, and then I'm going to say ick acid. And there you are, hydrofluoric acid. No oxygen, and has just two elements in it. Okay, how about going the other way, though? So how about if I go and uh, instead of having a formula, how about if I have a name first? So let me get this out of here. Reset my stage. So if I have a binary acid and I want to write the formula now. So here you would get something that would start out with hydro something ic acid. Like in this example here hydrobromic acid. I can see the hydro there, so I know, hey, this is going to be an anion that doesn't have any oxygen in it. So, one good thing you might want to do is pull out your uh, chart that has the anions on it. And if you don't have one of these, you can find them all over on the internet. I use this particular one in my classroom. And I'm looking around for something that's bromine that doesn't have oxygen. Whoop, that one has oxygen, bromate, but there's one right there. Br with a minus that doesn't have any oxygen with it. That's what I want. Hydro means no oxygen. So, doing pretty good so far. I found my anion that I want. So now I'm going to go and I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to write that anion down, Br with a minus, and I'm going to put hydrogen in front of it because all acids have a hydrogen. And for us inorganic people, we always put the hydrogen in the front. And so I have my charges. Now I'm going to crisscross my charges to cancel them out. In this case, I have plus one, minus one, already cancels. And so my final formula for this is just going to be HBr, hydrobromic acid. What do you think of that so far? Let's take a look at some of these ternary ones now. The ternary is a little more complicated than this one is. Whoops, go away. So let's deal with naming first. So in naming a ternary acid, uh, it's going to have maybe three or more elements in the acid itself. 
uh, it's going to be using a polyatomic ion as its anion, and many of these polyatomic ions are what we refer to as oxyanions. They contain oxygen. So this name doesn't have any prefix. Look at it. It has an oxygen in it. No hydro. Okay. So these are going to have oxygens in it. We're just going to name them straight up. Now here are the two different flavors of this one. First of all, some of the anions, and let's pull my little chart out over here. Some of these anions have um, two different names. So for instance, uh, let's take a look at a couple of them here. Here is uh, some of them end with ites, right? See that? Bisulfite ends with an ite. And some of them end in eights, like here's bromate. So you'll see all the way down here that there's ones that end in ites and eights, ites and eights. So they're all over the place here, and those are the two endings. So the way that we communicate as chemistry people, whether it's made from the from the uh, polyatomic ion that ends in an eight with the higher number of oxygens, or it ends in an ite with the lower number of oxygens, the way we communicate that is by uh, changing the name of the acid, the ending of the acid. If it ends in an eight, then we change it to an ick. Because if you ate it, you'd go ick. And then if it's an ite, we change it to an us. Because I don't have a joke for that one. Anyways, um, eights turn to icks, ites turn to us. Let's take a look here. I got an example. Here's one right here. Okay, and if I take a look at this one, first thing I'm going to do, I tell my kids in my classroom to do this. I say, hey, cover up the hydrogen and take a look at what's left. SO3, go to your ions list over here and find SO3. Looking around, and I found it, SO3 with a minus 2 charge. What's that called? Sulfite. So since it's called sulfite, I'm going to change its name to us. Ites turn into us. So I'm going to call this sol. Whoop, you got to watch out because sulfur and phosphorus are a bit tricky. They call them sulfurous acid. Okay. They're tricky because uh, instead of just sulfus acid, they put the er back in, huh? I know up here it doesn't have it, it's just sulfite, and, but whenever we're dealing with sulfur, and same thing with phosphorus, we throw the little ers back in, so it becomes sulfurous acid. Got to be flexible, sometimes you have just small derivations to these names, and uh, they can't let, can't let it trip us up, huh? We can get it no matter what. All right, let's try another quick example. So here's H2SO4, and again, I'm going to cover up that hydrogen, and I'm going to find out what's left. SO4 is left. Looking around up here, up oh, there it is, SO4, that's sulfate. So the 8 is going to get changed to an ick, and so my name is going to be sulfuric acid. This is the one that most people are familiar with, sulfuric acid, in car batteries, right? Wet batteries. All right. So uh, let's do one more thing where we go the other way. Clear some stuff up here. And now I want to take a look at what if we are naming this stuff and trying to write its formula. All right, so ternary acids writing the formula. Well, you're going to know if it's a ternary acid or not because it's not going to start with hydro, right? No hydro in it. So if you don't see a hydro in the front, you say, hey, I gotta find me a polyatomic ion that has an oxygen in it. Remember, if it ends in ick, then you're gonna be looking for the polyatomic ion that ends in eight.
If it ends with us, you're going to be looking for the polyatomic ion that ends in ite. We're just going to write out the symbol and its charge, put hydrogen in front, and crisscross balance out those charges. So here comes a couple of them. I've got nitric acid and nitrous acid. Again, no hydrogen in there. So, uh, no hydro in the front, excuse me. So I know there's no oxygen. So I'm going to find something with nitrogen and it has oxygen in it. And this ends with an ick. So I'm going to look for an eight. So nit nitrate. There it is. Nitrate. Get the symbol in its charge, NO3 with a minus one. So I'm going to come over here and write NO3 with a minus one. Put the hydrogen in the front. Crisscross to balance those charges. They're already canceled out here. So my formula is just HNO3. Nitrous acid, again, no hydro. So I'm looking for an oxygen. Us, so it comes from an ite. So nitrite is probably what I'm looking for, and there it is. NO2 with a minus. Again, put that hydrogen in the front. Crisscross, already canceled, HNO2. All right, so let me clear some things up here, and then I'm going to give you a couple of these to work on. And when you finish with those, you can hit the pause button or something like that, whatever you need to do to work on these for a while. There they are, my beautiful examples. And when you get done, then I will come back and uh, tell you what I think they should be named and the formulas that should be written. I'll leave that anion chart there. All right, hit that pause button, work these out, and I'll be right here. Okay, how'd you do? I'm hoping you did fine. I know it's a lot of stuff here to kind of take in, but we're going to knock it down, I'm sure. All right, hopefully you looked at this one and saw no oxygen. So this is going to be hydro, yes, hydrochloric acid. Did you get that one? How about this next one over here? I have an oxygen in it. So I go to my chart down here and I see chloride. That's ClO2 right there. Just like this, ClO2. So this ends in an I. I'm going to change it to an us. So this is chlorus. Whoops, that's an O. U S. Ick. Let's try that again. O R O U S. Chlorous acid. And then finally, I got HClO3. Find that ClO3. There it is. It's chlorate. So this just becomes chloric acid. Oh, man. C-H-L-O-R-O-U-S. Huh? Messing up all over the house here. This one here is chloric acid. There we go. Looking good, doing fine, hope so, slide this over a little bit. So uh, with this one, I had acetic acid. So I know, hey, no hydro, got to have an oxygen in it. Going to be looking for a polyatomic ion, ends in ick, so I'm going to be looking for an eight. Acetate, acetate, oh, I know what that is acetate that's made from the acetate ion again they changed the name just slightly huh we call it acetic acid instead of acidic acid i guess maybe some people might call it acidic acid i've heard that before anyways write this out acetate c2 h3 o2 with a minus put your hydrogen in the front 
And now I can see plus 1, minus 1, H2H3O2. That's acetic acid. Finally, hydrosulfuric acid. Hydro in the front, no oxygen. Going to find something with sulfur. Sulfur with no oxygen. Where is that at? Uh, oh, there it is. It's the sulfide. has a minus 2 charge. So I'm going to write that down. S with a minus 2, no oxygen, C. Put my hydrogen out here. Uh-oh, check this out. Plus and minus 2. Crisscross those charges. Bring that 2 down there. 1 goes over there. And I just end up with H2S for my final product. All right, I hope you did pretty good at that. That was a quick lesson on how we name and write the formulas for acids. Remember, two different types, ones that contain oxygen and ones that don't. So we have two different naming systems. We use hydro for ones that don't have oxygen. We don't use hydro for ones that do contain oxygens. But these ones come in two flavors. Remember, eights get changed into x and ites get changed into us. I hope you got a lot out of this. We'll see you next time. Have fun with your chemistry.